Told you. Yeah, no, okay, dude. So, like, here's the thing. Everyone I ever talked about it with was like, oh, yeah, you gotta do this, then, like, back dash real quick, or do a micro dash back. And I'm like, that seems fucking ridiculous. So I've been doing it that way this whole time. No one was like, by the way, hit handspring right before their face hits the ground. I've been getting false information this whole time, to the point where I was like, I'm not even gonna go for that online. That seems way too fucking risky. Oh, okay, so it adds two more points of damage. This is why I always advocate for building your own combos. I mean, building your own combos is cool, but if I know the max damage, I'm going to try to go for that. But, then again, I... So, like, here's the thing. I don't understand how Tekken com Tekken's combo structure works. Like, you have, like, things that, like, link into screw and then an ender. But it's, like, some things in this game... Because, like, I don't play Tekken that... Or, like, I haven't played Tekken until, like, recently. <laughs> like that. It's not, like, very obvious what the things are. N yeah. Okay, so, like, let's just say, like... Or, um... It's just no one's ever, like, explained other than, like... You're gonna do an opener or some sort of launch... Then a filler. Then a screw. Then whatever your ender is. Right? It's mostly finding out what the filler is and then the screw. So, you should also know what certain moves do to augment certain scenarios. That is also a thing. But, like, that's things just, like, I've had to, like, figure out on my own. Like, oh, this thing's a little bit better for wall carry. Or is better in wall carry scenarios. Or, like, this is what, like, a max damage ender is gonna be. Like, if there are random jabs in a filler situation, it does change... Does it change what screw you can get? Yeah. Like, that's one of those things that, like, this game should have a tutorial for. Oh, my God. Back to the whole... Fighting games need better tutorials discussion. Jesus. This game has a lot of things that just don't explain to you and hope you figure out on your own. Well, I'm an advocate for a decent tutorial. I don't think combo theory would be... Yeah, see, in a game like Tekken, I agree with you for that. Because Tekken's combo system is kind of, like, ridiculous. But, so, backing that up a little bit. Um, something like Killer Instinct. Because I just love talking about how great that game is for a beginner. Killer Instinct's combo system is very well explained in their tutorial. I think you can explain combo theory. Like, this is how the combo is structured. It's structured with an opener, some sort of filler, and in Tekken's case, a screw, and then your ender. I think that's pretty easy to explain. And then just be like, this is what you should be looking for. And then, here's other ways to figure it. Or like... Here's a sample of what it is. Figure it out from here. <laughs> like, I think there are ways you can explain combo theory and demonstrate it in a way that, like, would allow people to figure it out in a better way than Tekken shows it. Because the only way really Tekken shows is, like, in the move list. You know what I mean? And they're jank combos. They don't really actually teach you much. I think that there is definitely some like way that Tekken could explain the way their combo system works and it'd be okay at least enough to give you the information to like look through a move list and be like okay here's what an opener or launch is for this character here's what the screw is and here's what I can use for filler you know what I mean play a little devil's advocate here Tekken has always been a really niche game so it really never needed a tutorial because it never intended to cater to an unrealistically large number of new players see that's every fighting game ever, though. And I think that's kind of an outdated way developers look at their game. Because they're like, okay, well, the people that are playing this probably have been playing... The majority of people, at least, have been playing Tekken for, like, however long. So they already understand how Tekken combos work. And they've been able to figure it out because they've been playing the game for the past, like, 20 years. And then they rely on user-based content for tutorials, like, stuff you can find online for Tekken. I think now that we're getting into more of an age where more people are picking up fighting games, and more people are into it, I really do think that people need to start looking at at least a tutorial to explain simple things like combos. Or the combo structure of their game. Explain a little bit of, like, footsies. Just a little bit. You don't need a lot. <laughs> explain, like, okay, so this move is better at a specific range than it is up close. 
or explain that a down forward one is really is minus one, but that means you can still move or something like that. Maybe not go like so in depth on frame data, but there is stuff that like fighting games should have now, especially since they've just become massively bigger than they used to be. And especially something as complex as Tekken should have something that explains how the game works. At least something. Also for tutorials, why the hell do they not have something that explains like something as simple as Korean backdashing? That's like a super important thing. But they don't have that. That's what blows my mind. Well, you can't in theory mess around with the movement system Tekken and just get it, at least in concept. True. And to be fair, the more well-versed you are in fighting games, the easier it is to understand that you can mess... Or the easier it is to mess around with Tekken's movement system. But I'm saying this from a perspective of a brand new player. You've never played any fighting games and you were just like, Tekken's the fucking game for me. I think that in future Tekkens, they should have some sort of semblance of a tutorial that explains even the bare basics. Again, like backdashing or backdash canceling, movement in general, with how important sidestepping actually is. Because how many times have we seen, even in my stream, me not utilizing sidesteps properly, or other people I'm fighting not using sidesteps properly, being too linear? How often do we see that? All the time, really. Especially in lower ranks. People do not sidestep. The fact that you have to go to YouTube and look up how to get out of a grab off the ground is dumb exactly look at all that there are those ground techniques and then look at all that they don't explain what this is they don't explain what any of that is you just have to figure it out and my theory behind that is that it's an antiquated system from back in the arcade days where like they're like we just need you to put in quarters so we're not going to explain anything to you you're just gonna have to figure it out either a someone tells you or B, like, just get fucked enough times until you, like, magically figure something out. They don't even tell you how to break throws? Dude, I had to make a video how to break throws. I made a video on that. I genuinely am an advocate for fighting games having better tutorials. Because the best tutorial I've ever played, hands down, Killer Instinct. That explained everything about that game. But Killer Instinct also has the perk of not being, like, a super complex game to get into. Two things games need in-game frame data and a tutorial. Fucking yes. Oh my god. I wish more fighting games opted for um, in-game frame data on a display. It's especially Tekken. If Tekken had in-game frame data, oh, that would make learning matchups so much easier, dude. And it's a super antiquated mentality, though. To just not have good tutorials. Tekken does have a really in-depth training mode. It does have that. I will give it that. It has a very, very good training mode. But it doesn't... It's just throwing you into training mode and being like, figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, why? And I know, like, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, casuals, though. Like, who the fuck cares about those guys? But it's like, dude! Casuals people are the people that are gonna buy the fucking game. Oh, God. Like... I've ranted about this before. Like, I went on a Twitter tirade about this, but the fact that, like, the majority of fighting game developers kind of just ignore that the casual market exists is insane. That they don't put things in there to help casuals, like, at least learn the game. Well, casuals haven't always been the ones who buy the game. This is true. And, you know, back in the 90s, this is, like, my argument would be completely moot because no one was really playing fighting games except for, like, people in the arcades, right? That was the people who were buying fighting games. But now that, like, fighting games has grown and they're trying to become an eSport, or at least, like, some people are trying to turn it into an eSport and stuff like that, that, like, the market for fighting games has grown, there needs to be more things to, like, bring that stuff in. Here are all the ingredients to bake a cake. We won't give you the recipe, though. Yeah, it's just like that. It is exactly like that, even. They give you all the things you need, but they don't tell you what to do with it. <laughs> Which, back in the day, that was fine. People were used to figuring stuff out like that. 
But since like I'll even go like far back to say like oh nine. Since like the home console generation really grew and arcades really died out, it kind of doesn't make sense that fighting games haven't caught up with that and have been like, let's put in a good tutorial. 